Welcome to video 8 in my intro to HTML web video series. In this video I'm going to focus on the table. The table is just a collection of data and it's organized into columns and rows of cells. That data can be anything from text to preformatted text to links to forms to other tables, uh, links, images, anything can be arranged into the form of a table. But what the table is meant to do is organize data that's related to one another. So let's look at how we're supposed to do this. Table is, consists of three different types of elements that are nested one inside the other. It starts with the table element. Table rows or TRs are nested inside of the table and then TD or THs, which stands for table heading or table data, are nested inside of table rows. So here's how it starts. We want to open and close the table tag. And it looks like that. The table tag establishes when the table is going to begin and end. It establishes the range for the table. Nested inside of the table are TRs, or table rows. Let's say we wanted to make a three column, three row table. We need to have three sets of TRs, or three sets of table rows. Table rows look like this. They, be, they open and they close, and the element inside them is TR. If I wanted to make it a three row table, I would need three sets of TRs. So I'll copy it, paste it below, and paste it below again. So this is the basic structure for a three-row table. Table opens and closes. Nested inside of the table is a series of TRs. Now, how do we create those columns? Those columns can be created using TDs or THs. A TH stands for table heading. The first row in our, in our table should consist of our headings. So I'm going to use the TH. TH opens, TH closes. This is going to establish a heading. We want to put our content inside of these THs. Cell 1.1, which means just first row, first column. I'm going to copy that paste it again, and paste it again. I'm going to make a 3x3 three three table. So this one would be cell 1, 2. This one would be cell 1, 3 for cell row 1, column 1, row 1, column 2, row 1, column 3. So this establishes our heading. This is the top row of our table. I'm going to copy this, paste it down in the second row. Now the second row shouldn't have headings because it's not the top of the table. Headings are reserved for the top of the table. All the other cells should be made up of TDs or table data tags. So I'll change the H's to D's down here. And I've just established my second row of cells. And now I'm going to change the data just a little bit because it's row 2, cell 1, 2, and 3. Now I'll copy this and paste it into the last row, the bottom row. And I'll change the content just a little bit to reflect which cells these actually are. These are row 3, cell 1, row 3, cell 2, row 3, cell 3. So this is the very basic structure of an HTML table. Table opens and closes. We've got a three row, three column table. Nested inside of table, we first have our TRs, or our table rows. The top TR is going to contain our table headings. The next TR is going to contain table data. And the third TR is going to contain table data. So we've got one, two, three rows. And in each row, we have one, two, three cells. So if I save it, launch it in the browser, here's what we have. We have a three by three table. When I highlight it, you can actually see the boundaries in between those cells. You can see that our data is formatted into the form of a grid. Our top row is our headings. And you can see that our headings are bold. 
They're darker and thicker than the rest of the data. So this is the basic structure of an HTML table. We can expand upon this. I want to start by expanding upon it by using some descriptive elements and attributes. I want to use the table caption. Caption looks like this. Caption opens and caption closes. And in between those tags, we want to add some content. This should be a very, very brief description of what the table is all about. So I'm just going to call mine 3x3 three three table. Basic 3x3 three three table. That's a good example of a caption. What a caption looks like is when I save it, refresh in the browser, it will appear at the top of the table and it will be centered. See that? So it's an introduction to the table. It shouldn't be terribly, terribly descriptive. It should be brief and simple. If you wanted to add a more involved, in-depth description, you could use something called the summary attribute. The summary attribute would be associated with the table. And as you might recall from an earlier, earlier lesson, an attribute is a piece of code that will modify an element. In this case, this attribute provides more of a description for the table. Since it's uh, the summary of the entire table, we're going to put it into the opening tag of the table element. So table opens and closes. I'm going to put it up here in the opening. Summary equals quotation marks. That's the basic syntax of an attribute. You always have your identifier, which is the name, the equals operator, and then our quotation marks. And then you usually provide some sort of argument into the quotation marks. In this case, the argument is going to be a string of, of data that is going to describe what this table is all about. So my summary says, this is a basic 3x3 three three table used to demonstrate the syntax of a table for my intro to HTML web video series. That's a good summary. The summary should just describe what that data is. It shouldn't tell you what the specific pieces of data are, but should give you an overall summary of this data. Now, we can start thinking about breaking down our table into three parts. A table can have a table head, a table foot, and a table body. The T head or table head should be the introduction to the table. It should contain our table headings and, and um, maybe our caption. The T body should be all of our uninterpreted data or our raw data. And the T foot should be a summary or uh, the row of the table that summarizes all of the data or interprets all of the data in the table. So what we need to do is, is more nesting. We're going to nest rows or series of rows into our T head, T foot, and T body tags. So I'm going to start with the T head. T head looks like this. Now, T head needs to open and close. I'm going to contain the first entire row inside of T head. I'm going to nest it inside of there. So T head opens, but it also has to close. I am opening it above the first row and closing it right below the first row. Now, if I save this, and launch it in the browser, you're not going to see any difference. I mean, it shifted the cells down by a little teeny tiny bit, but really there's no difference in what it dis the way it displays. T head, T foot, and T body are semantic elements. In other words, if you think back to what we've been talking about all along with semantics, semantic elements provide semantic meaning to groups of, of, of elements or groups of data. These ones define that area as heading type data. This makes it easy for screen readers to interpret, but it also makes it easier to style a table as well. And we'll get to that a little bit later. So T head should be the top 
top row, you can also include the caption in the T head, which I will do. So caption is contained inside of my T head. Next has to come the T foot. Why? Your feet aren't underneath your head. I don't know why you have to put the T foot right underneath the T head, but you do. It's the necessary syntax for the order of T head, T foot, T body. So what you want to do is get all of your all of your data that should come last. Move it up. So I've moved up cell 3, 3, 3, 2, and 3, 1. And I will nest it inside of my T foot right below my T head. One of the reasons that T foot is right below T head is so that it the summary will render just after the, the heading of the table, and then it will render all of the data next. Really, it's a, it's a negligible amount of time, but um, that's just the way it's supposed to be done. So T foot comes right after T head. I know it's strange. Get used to it. So T head is that the heading or the intro to our table. It's going to contain all of our THs or our T he table heading, and it's going to also contain the caption. T foot should be a summary of our, all of our data. It comes right after T head. And then the next group or the last group is T body. T body is all of our uninterpreted raw data. It looks like this, T body. It opens and it closes. And then all of our body type data is nested inside of there. So if I save it, Refresh it and launch it in the browser. You'll notice cells 3, 1, 3, 2, and 3, 3, they didn't move. They didn't actually shift up right underneath the head, which seems incongruous because you look at where it is in the order of our, of our table on the page. Here's cells 1, 2, 3. Here's cells 3, 1, 3, 2, 3, 3, right below it. And then here's 2, 1, 2, 2, 2, 3 there. But when it renders in the browser, it does it in the correct order. The browser is smart enough to interpret it that way. So that's the basics of tables. Table is made up of the table element, table rows, table data, and table headers. It can have a caption, a summary, and then that table can be broken up into three parts, a T head, T body, and T foot. In the next video, we're going to focus on styling this table.